The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hi everyone, welcome to a special 1875 podcast. Um, we're doing a, a five yards week this week where we're mashing up with this scouting game um, that's relatively new. Um, it's only been going for a few months now and you know Joe and I are, are quite familiar with it. And there's actually six Blackburn Rovers players on there already in terms of players that you can look at and scout and, and add to your squad. And we're going to talk about the careers of those guys, Joe, aren't we? We're going to pick up on those six and kind of work out where they're going to be in the next few years. Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a great platform and it's a platform that I've been using myself um, as a supporter and as a user. I know you're involved, Andy. So, uh, yeah, very happy to be here and talking about it. Yeah, it's all about scouting, really. And something I think that all fans like to do is to look at a player and work out how good they are now and how could they how good they could be. And we've got a couple like Harvey Elliott, I think, is going to be the first one we'll talk about. It, people are loving looking at him right now and going, where's he going to end up in the next few years? Yeah, I mean, Harvey, I think from a neutral perspective, even fans from other clubs and fans in the Premier League think about him a lot as well. And it's not just us that are talking about him, which is um, probably a, a blessing, but maybe not a blessing as well, because uh, we're likely to lose him back to Liverpool. Yeah, and that's what you've kind of said here. It's obviously, as we know, it, it's all over. the. Every time anyone speaks about him, you have to talk about his age. He's 17 years old. Um, you know, he's playing... So he's starting every game for Blackburn at the moment. He's been able to find the back of the net four times and he's got eight assists, which all adds up to performance pay on the five yards platform. And if I just quickly uh, jump onto the platform, this is what it would look like on a desktop. It's easily accessible on a mobile as well. It's really easy to do. And it's got all of the players in here for you. So you can just search for Elliot and he should come up automatically there. Obviously playing for Blackburn Rovers, but the picture of him in his Liverpool is... is uh, his club kit and then you can see that performance pay this season adds up to 570k um it's it's not equivalent to real life you don't have to if you wanted to buy him for your squad you wouldn't have to actually give five yards 49 million pounds it's um it's you don't have to give him that joel you bought um i think you bought elliot have you yeah i've got 100 percent of harvey um so yeah every time he scores every time he assists and every time blackburn win I get a little bit of change in my wallet. Um, but yeah, he's more of a long-term investment for me. So it's kind of about going on there and looking at those player values and thinking, will that player outgrow the value that five yards think he will? And, uh, and that's the game really, isn't it? Exactly. You're up against the five yard scouts and the scouts have kind of mapped out his career and, you know, and that comes up with a value in the end. And that value is now 49 million. Um, he is earning performance pay. You need to be in the championship or above to be able to earn performance pay. And you get it from starting in a winning side. You get it from the goals that they score and you get it from the assists that they make. And in the championship, that adds up to 30K each time that happens. And you can see there that that's led up to 570K at the moment for Harvey Elliott. And that's how his price has, has gone over time. So I guess, Joe, you bought him quite early on, did you? Yeah, around so November. Had... Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, um, again, you know, it's about kind of predicting predicting that market, isn't it? And thinking, where is a player now and is he under or overvalued? And you don't have to buy pe people um, five yards. You can just do scout reports. And once you do these scout reports, it gives him a kind of an average what people think his level is now and what his potential could be. And that is kind of based around... Um, a player rating is out of 100, five being Sunday League and 95 being world class. So the the scouts that have, have done scout reports, and I'm sure you're one of those, put him quite close to world class as a potential. Yeah. And about 75, we say, is around about Premier League level. So that's probably why he's impressing in the championship at the moment, because these scouts, Ben Wells, Sam Allwood and Joe Harvey, um, think that he's round about, you know, a very good championship player to bottom end Premier League player now Joe yeah exactly um and I think as I've kind of mapped out in the uh in the graphic um that I've put together I think that you know he's going to head back to Liverpool at the end of this season I do think he's got quite a strong chance to to play games in that side probably play 
you know, in that kind of B team that goes out in the Champions League group stages, which again, Champions League games, accrue performance pay on the platform. Um, so yeah, I'm looking at those Champions League fixtures and thinking that, yeah, I can really see him coming in and getting a lot of game time in Europe, especially in the group stages, in the Cups, um, and, and really progressing for Liverpool in, in 21-22. Yeah, absolutely. And I asked, we put um, some Rovers chat polls out for each of these players that we're <clears> going to talk about and where they might get to in their career or where they might play regularly. And I think, you know, Blackburn Rovers fans have a very high opinion of what they've seen of Harvey Elliott so far. They think he could play in the World Cup finals for England. Um, I don't know if you answered these, Joe, or whether you saw them at the time. Is that some? Does that spread seem quite like on the nose to you? Do you think that's where he's going to end up? Yeah, I think definitely. I think there's no question that he'll be a Premier League footballer. Um, and I think with that, especially at a certain level, that comes with the Champions League element. Uh, the real question is, does he make it for England? And I think you can already see with his involvement in the England youth setup that he obviously fits the mould that the the England setup are looking for. Um, he definitely has a lot of the traits that they're looking for. And at his age, you know, there's there's no doubt in my mind that at some point over his career, which will last at least another 15 years, um, he's definitely going to end up with some caps for England, whether or not England can uh, do well. And um, and succeed with him, I, I don't know, but it would be great if Harvey Elliott could get into that side at some point. And and I would imagine that if Gareth Southgate is looking at anybody uh, in the Championship at the moment, um, I'm sure that Harvey Elliott and Adam Armstrong are somewhere on that list. Nicely seeged into Adam Armstrong there. Uh, I can tell you've done hosting as well as guesting on things. Um, so Adam Armstrong is the next person we're going to talk about and unsurprisingly he was a very popular request when the platform was launched and he's another one with three scout reports to his name. Um, he's currently valued on the platform at £16 million, so a lot less than Harvey Elliott, but there's a, a few things that go into that, Joe, isn't there? It's not just a case of Adam Armstrong is only 16 and, and Harvey Elliott's 49 because Elliott's a much better player than Armstrong. <clears throat> Yeah, there's, there's a lot more that goes into that. So if you think about the age, um, Adam Armstrong is six years older than Harvey Elliott, which is a lot, really. You don't actually think about how young 17 is, but, uh, you know, the, the performance pay that could be accrued over a six-year period um, definitely makes him worth more. And, and, of course, his parent club is a Premier League side and the performance pay for Premier League wins and for Premier League goals and assists is significantly higher than Championship. So whilst we do believe Adam Armstrong will make it into the Premier League, hopefully at some point, Harvey Elliott is neon guaranteed to. Um, So that guarantee comes with a much higher value. Um, But it may be that you think that Adam Armstrong is definitely likely to play in the Premier League and therefore you think that 16 million valuation is well under what he could be worth. Yeah, so I put this together for Adam Armstrong. This bit comes from the scouts and again, um, there's been three scouts that have done scout reports on Adam Armstrong on the, the Five Yards platform and it's come out with uh, his level now is above his very high championship level possibly low Premier League level but you can see the difference in potential between Adam Armstrong and Harvey Elliott's scout reports that 76 yeah. represents just above average Premier League player and you can see here that by his report people think he's got great speed and very good finishing, the technique's quite high as well Um but I mean, and that pretty much maps what we know as Blackburn Rovers fans. But he's managed to accrue almost ever since the platform launched, and that's just in the Championship, which, as you said, Joe, is a very low um, performance pay league. And I've mapped out his next four years here of what I think might happen. I've given him like a forty percent Championship of playing chance, sorry, of playing in the Premier League next season. And um, that's probably not going to be with us. But I still, I mean, what do you think? Like, what of his? Do you think he will go? in the summer or do you think he, there's a good chance that he'll stay with Blackburn one more season? It's tough to say isn't it I think um, he's obviously got 16 goals he's got 16 goals up to press now I think if he matched that in the second half of this season and gets to 30 I don't think there's any doubt in my mind I think a 30 goal a season striker in the championship makes it to the Premier League no matter what uh, but it's whether he can match that. And I don't know whether that's going to be plausible with Bradley Dack in the side and more focal points and changes in formation. And perhaps if things really don't go our way, there might even be a change in manager. Um, so there's a lot of factors that still keep it very much in up in the air. Yeah, you can see there that 
it's actually more than three scout reports. We've had loads of scout reports on Adam Armstrong. You're there again, Joe. <laughs> Eight scout reports all together in Adam Armstrong. So there's lots of different opinions there, but it's all averaged out to that kind of top end championship, bottom end Premier League um, talent that Adam Armstrong is. And you can see his price hasn't changed um, along. And I think that's possibly due. I wouldn't say he's in the greatest of form right this second. Um, we, obviously, this is being recorded two days after the Millsborough match. So, and he missed a couple of chances there where he could have added to his tally, but he's still getting those chances. He's still having plenty of shots on goal. He's managing to keep those shot numbers quite high, Joe, at the moment. Yeah, and he was a key creator in the goal that we did score as well. Um, and I think, of course, performance pay doesn't take into account things like second assists. So, yeah, I think his actual goal scoring form might be a little bit down, but I don't think he's uh, too far out of form with his touch and the way he's playing on the pitch. No, I wouldn't, yeah, I may sound like as if out of form there. <laughs> I just means not scoring at the same ridiculous rate as he was early in the season, I guess is a better way of putting it. Um, still likely to be his best ever goal scoring season, though, and this is the result of the poll. Most. I mean, that's quite a high percentage there going for a bottom half Premier League regular. Some person mm. going for Champions League qualifier there. So a couple of people having their very high opinions of Adam Armstrong. Again, does that kind of fit to what you think of Adam Armstrong? It's difficult when you're looking at potential for Adam Armstrong because this is a player that's played two, 300 football games already at the age of 23, which is, you know, more than a player like Dwight Gale, who is at Newcastle currently, has played in his career. And he's... Uh, approaching the age of 30, 31. So Adam has played a lot of football. How much room for further improvement is there? I think we are seeing Adam Armstrong at his best. It's just whether you think he would continue to impress in the Premier League. So I would agree with the the overall outcome here that 64% have gone for. Yeah, I think so. Did you hear Mowbray's interview this week where he said yeah. he's still got things to learn? And I was thinking... But like you say, he's, he's had that much football as a young player. Has he? Maybe. Yeah, like, I'm sure he difficult. does. I'm like, I like to think the players keep on improving or, as we go. And maybe it's more mentality than than technique that he's going to be learning. Now. Yeah, definitely. But he has the experience, so uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, ben Brereton's on the platform. Uh, no one scouted Ben Brereton yet. So um, if you are interested in, in getting involved in five yards off the back of this and you want to get on there and looking for someone to scout and to show what you can do and you're a Blackburn Rovers fan and obviously you've seen a lot of Ben Brereton this season, thankfully. Um, I should be calling him Brereton, shouldn't I? That's yeah. <laughs> new pronunciation, Ben Brereton. Um, he's on there for 13 million, so only a couple short of Adam Armstrong. And again, Ben Brereton is a little bit younger than Adam so that plays a part in that his performance pay he's earned so far is is just short of 500k and that comes off the back of eight wins that he started in and he's three goals and three assists as well which I think Joe a lot of people would have been surprised that he's even got that many and um, even if you just go back to the summer he was the the butt of quite a lot of jokes wasn't he Ben and, but really come out and, and, and all guns blazing this season. Yeah Ben's a very interesting case isn't he I think he's part of this new breed of young players that have played in that that not golden generation I don't want to go too far but that kind of generation of England youth setup players Harry Chapman was one as well and we know now he's at Shrewsbury in League One on loan um, and they've done so well at England youth level and then they get out into the you know I don't want to say the real world but they come down to the EFL and a lot of them you know they do sink and don't swim and I think Ben definitely epitomizes that I think he's got all the ability and all the potential, but perhaps just lacks a lot of the mental, um, the mental side to his game. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how that matures. He's obviously up against Sam Gallagher, really, not just in terms of the type of player that he is, but also his physical presence on the pitch. They're both quite tall. They're both players wide strikers. Um, so it's going to be difficult for him because he's always going to be playing second fiddle to Adam Armstrong as, as long as he's here. Uh, but he does have time on his side. He does have age on his side. Yeah, he's going to produce fewer goals than Adam Armstrong. I think that's quite clear to see. I don't think he's ever going to be someone who's going to get you 20 goals a season. Even if he did play through the middle, I don't think he's got that kind of ruthless finishing in him. Um, I've kind of forecasted again here down the bottom what I think might happen in the next few seasons for him. Um, I see him staying at Rovers for, for another few years, maybe a long time. Um, I'm not sure who would who would sign him, especially if we keep making the kind of steady progress that we are doing. 
Um, I've given him nine goals and six assists for next season and around 11 goals and five assists for the season afterwards, um, predicting that Rovers will probably stay in the Championship for at least another two seasons. Although yeah. there is a chance of us going up. And then, you know, in terms of him playing in the Premier League, I've given him about a 20% chance of him playing in the Premier League in the next by by five years' time. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not as sure on Ben as I am with Adam and De Harvey that they yeah. can make a real impact in the Premier League. And if we look at the poll, um, it's quite close, I think. Between, yeah, it's quite close, very close, in fact, between bottom half Premier League regular and a championship top half. And mm. again, is that does that mirror your feelings on him as well? Perhaps. I think I'm, uh, maybe perhaps an option for just championship regular. Um, mm. I, I don't know whether Ben Ben's ceiling will be uh, a decent goal scorer uh, at the level that we're at now. Um, but it's hard to know. So, yeah, it doesn't shock me that there's a bigger split there. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I could... I mean, someone's gone for Champions League qualifier. So, <laughs> so someone has... Uh, fair play. That would be two people, wouldn't it? Two people have gone for, for that. So, fair play. He's got his fans out there. And if you are one of those fans, then maybe you think that that 13 million on five yards is an absolute bargain. If he's qualifying for the Champions League and if he starts in a win in the Champions League, then he's going to get a massive chunk towards that. 13 million, he'd only need a couple of decent Champions League performances and he'd be making it. Um, Lewis Travis is the next player that's on the platform. He's on for 10 million. He was the first Blackburn Rovers player on there because I requested him before we even started going public. Um, at the time, he wasn't injured and I just love Lewis Travis. Um, he's been scouted. So the scout that's scouted Lewis Travis has put him at 72 at the moment, which is a high championship low Premier League level with the potential of, of being a very good Premier League player yeah. and the scout thinks work rate is absolutely maximum and um, defensive duels not bad in the air uh, not bad in the passing creative side of things which I think is actually under uh, overlooked a lot with Lewis Travis that he can play the ball forward very well and and, and players into areas where um, other defensive midfielders especially in championship, can't yeah. do, don't have that side of things as well. Absolutely. I think what sets Premier League defensive midfielders aside from championship defensive midfielders is the ability to not just win the ball back, but then progress it forward. You know, the difference between Sam Morsey's and Richie Smallwood's and, you know, Lewis Travis's, if he doesn't have that side to his game in the future and if he doesn't progress with that. And then players like Scott McTominay, uh, Nemanja Matic, um, you know, these defensive minded midfielders, but who can get their foot on the ball and move the ball forward well. Um, so, yeah, I think Lewis Travis definitely has that to his game, which is why I'm very confident that he'll play in the Premier League. I think I can see him playing for a, a, a mid range side. I, I can see him at a Newcastle type team. Um, and I can see him reaching definitely the heights of a player like, you know, John Joe Shelby, for example, in that side, who can definitely move the ball forward well and create, but is aggressive and, and combative in midfield. This is actually your scout point. You've mentioned Newcastle in there. Um, yeah. They've been interested for a while, haven't they? And and Burn Sean Dyche is Burnley. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think he would suit, uh, as much as it pains me to say, it, he would suit Burnley big time. I could, I could definitely see him there if it wasn't for the rivalry and, and for the lower chances of that transfer going through. Yeah, definitely like a replacement for an Ashley Westwood or a, a Josh Brownhill who filled those central spots at the moment. Um, I'd say he probably has a little bit more to his game than than one of those, uh, one or two of those. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm a massive fan of him. I'm, he played the full 90, didn't he, on, on Sunday. So it's good that he's back um, to that kind of level of fitness. Again, I've got him staying at Rovers next season. Um, and then that chance of Premier League um, and who he might play for. I've got promoted here. I think a newly promoted side could easily um, see Lewis Travis as a player that they could have. Um, and it's difficult to predict who that's going to be in the next three, four years. Hopefully, maybe one of them will be Blackburn um, and might go up with us. But if that doesn't happen, I can see a newly promoted side getting him or, or you know, a top championship side who are looking to go up um, could easily take him and go up with him so um, I think he's got a good chance of playing in the Premier League, let's see what our poll comes out as and yeah um, the fans tend to agree they're over half thinking he's going to be a Premier League but in fact what's that? if you add in the other ones then 80% of fans think he'll be a Premier League regular Yeah, definitely Let's move on then to 
the other ones. Thomas Kaminsky is a, re a relatively recent addition to the platform, um, but he's, he's just been superb, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, he has a class about him. I think he's proven himself, as I've said there, to be one of the league's more reliable goalkeepers. Uh, you know, he can save from close range and he's just incredibly consistent. Um, and obviously we know he has some interesting traits that make him quite a Premier League type goalkeeper potentially uh, because he does play so high up the field and he's comfortable with the ball at his feet. Uh, but for me, I don't really see Thomas in the Premier League. I think I can see him as a championship stalwart. I can see him staying in this country for quite a long time. I think his abilities very much suit this league and and I can see him being a very highly sought after goalkeeper in years to come at this level. Yeah, he's 28 now, but that's not necessarily anything for a goalkeeper. I think Friedel was about that age when he joined us and went on, obviously, to play for another 12, 13, 14 years. Um, but interesting that you see him staying in the Championship, albeit at the very top of the Championship. Um, a lot of, again, these are Rovers fans, of course, but a lot of them will have him. In fact, almost 90% of fans say that he could be a, a Premier League regular, and mm. perhaps he could be. Um, See, I think he could be a Premier League player, but I don't think he'd be a regular. I could imagine him being on the bench for a Brighton in the Premier League, maybe, but I, I can't see him being a regular Premier League footballer myself. Yeah, it's difficult, obviously, because of goalkeepers, we, we all know it's only one that can play. And to be a number one at a Premier League side is, is quite an achievement. Only 20 of them are going to do it. So yeah, um, I can see him being more of a Carl Darlow type who I, I think absolutely. he's probably yeah, claimed that number one now. Uh, Dubrovka is back, but he hasn't managed to force his way back in yet. But And yeah. Thomas could play Premier League football if he goes up with us, of course. That is the one thing I would caveat that with. Yeah, absolutely. And Dan Butterworth was a, a request, um, someone who obviously knows the Blackburn youth system very well and has seen him play a number of times, as we both have. And I'm going to kind of hand this one over to you because you've seen him probably even more than I have. What yeah, is I mean, about? yeah, go on, mate. What is it about him that made someone request him, do you think? Well, I think he made his debut quite a while ago, obviously, in that 2018-19 season, or his league debut anyway, against Bolton. And and he looked good in that game. It was the same game that John Buckley came on as well. And and he's a very talented footballer. He came from Manchester United, and players that come out of the Manchester United youth setup, you definitely know they've got something about them. Um, injuries have hampered his growth, um, as I've mentioned there, but his, his natural abilities are still there to be seen. And and he can finish and he has a nice touch. So, yeah, Dan Butterworth, I can understand why someone would request him. I could understand him being undervalued because he's been out of the loop for so long. But he's definitely a risk because players sometimes when they have long-term injuries at a young age can't recover from them. And he's only down for £5 million, um, on the Five Yards website. So if you are one of the people who think that he can make it uh, fairly high and I'm looking at the poll here, 7% believe that he could be a regular kind of Premier League player and quite a few thinking he could be a, a championship player, which does does earn you performance pay. And, you know, five million is well achievable for a player who's only 21 if you think that he's going to play regularly, even in the championship, um, especially as a forward who can earn goals and assists as well. Um, we, we keep talking about requesting players, Joe. That's something that's really cool about the Five Yards platform, isn't it? That you can put in a request um, for players and you know, the scouts will will look into it for you. Yeah, so um, a player that I'd recently requested was Anthony Alanga um, at Manchester United's youth team, um, playing for the under-23s and doing very well. I've watched him a few times because I watched quite a lot of PL2 football and thought, yeah, that's a player I can see having a good career. And then he comes onto the platform, having requested him in the way that you're showing there. And um, he comes onto the pl platform at 13 million. And, and for me, I definitely see him having the career trajectory of a Mason Greenwood and Marcus Rashford. Um, so I I saw that as great value and, and went all in on that. So, yeah. You bought him for the 13 million. How much did that cost you? Uh, so, oh gosh, what's 13, the math? It's 10 million. times, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's 130. Um, so, yeah. I think that'll be a, a sound investment for me. Uh, but again, it's always a risk. So it's, yeah, uh, absolutely. we're all playing the game, aren't we? We're all playing the game. And the game at the moment has Kylian Mbappe as um, the person who will earn the most performance pay in his career. And that's how these prices are, are made up of. The scouts do what we've just done with all those Blackburn prospects, try and map out their careers and you know see how 
that goes for them and how much performance pay that, that will earn them. And you can see that's how much performance pay they've earned during the season so far. That's how much you know we think they'll earn during the career. And Mbappe, Haaland, Sancho, Sane, Sterling, these are all the names that you recognise as some of the best players in the world. Again, though, if there's someone on there that you don't have, that you would like to see on there, you're interested in getting them on, then just fill this out. And, you know, all you have to do is put in the club, the player's full name, submit it, and it goes to the scouts. And you'll be told you get an email saying that your player has been added to the platform. And then you can go in there and, and see if you agree or disagree with the valuation. And again, like I say, you don't have to put money into the platform. You can just come on and do some scout report as well. Um, which there's things going on under, underneath um, in the future, which may see this be a bit more dynamic and changing month by month. So um, it's definitely an interesting platform to be involved in, Joe. Yeah, I've enjoyed my time with it so far. I obviously use it financially and try and play the game, but... Yeah, the scouting stuff and the connections and the networking is definitely a good element too. Absolutely. And just to, to finish off with, I think we've got poll, a poll out at the moment, if I just go on to Twitter, which is from Rovers Chat. And you can actually, someone will come out with this, a new Rovers player is going to be on this platform by the end of the week, because there's a poll running where you can choose who you think's got the best career ahead of them out of the youth prospects that we've got at the moment. Um, Joe Rankin Costello is currently well. He's, he's leading the poll by quite some way. If you want to set up um, a John Buckley fan club or a Jack Bale fan club or a Sam Barnes fan club in the next couple of days, then maybe we can get that lead overturned from Rankin Costello and one of the other ones can go onto the platform. So get on there and get voting for whoever you think is going to have the brightest career and that player will be added to the five yards platform at the end of this week. So there will be a seventh Flipman Rovers player added. Well, thank you, Joe, for your time today. No problem, mate. Thanks for having me on. No problem. And uh, we're going to put this out and hopefully you guys know a little bit more about Five Yards, but also you've enjoyed the chat about where these Blackburn Rovers players are going to end up going. And if you agree or disagree, again, we'd love to know what you think about that in the comments. Who are our top players? Where are they going to end up? Are they going to get promoted with us? Is Blackburn going to be a Premier League player and going to be earning performance pay in the Premier League? That'd be great. That's a dream, really. Um, so um, just say thank you again and we'll see you again soon bye guys the Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by sixyardsout.com they've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more they also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit check them out using the link in the description below So we lose.